It's good to, be, good to be together for this Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday worships. Both of these worships are available to you now. You can participate in both of them all the way through, or you can take a break after the Monday, Thursday part and come back for a Good Friday at a later time. However you do it, be sure that it is meaningful for you and that you get to soak up as much of it as you need to. Know that God is present with you in the angst and the grief and the fear and also in the promise. Let us begin worship. We've been on quite a journey during Lent. We put ourselves into the stories of Holy Week for some time now because they are important to our faith journey and our identity as followers of Jesus. We've freeze-framed moments of Holy Week so we might put ourselves in the picture and enter the passion of Jesus. Enter Enter the story, enter the place you belong, not just looking on, for this is your story, enter the story.
tonight, the characters we have experienced by zooming into the works of art will step into our picture. We will hear from them again, but this time they come to us knowing the rest of the story. Some of you may remember Paul Harvey's radio show where he would tell a story, set up a dilemma, but after the commercial break, he would come back and tell the rest of the story. He would offer some surprising twist. Holy Week is a time to mourn the continued suffering in the world, but we do so knowing the surprising twist of the story of Jesus. We are Easter people as we live in the post-resurrection era that reminds us that suffering and death is overcome when we follow Jesus' command to be the agents of change in a world that so desperately needs a word of resurrection hope. Enter Enter the passion, enter the place we belong, not just looking on, for this is our passion, enter the passion, enter the story, enter the passion. Looking the parade of Jesus, I was fascinated with what I had heard about Jesus and perhaps downright scared. But I showed up outside the gates to the city that day to watch his entrance. And then things got more intense in Jerusalem that week. I don't even think intense covers it. Actually horrifying. Roman executions are always gruesome, but this one was, this one held the message of see what we do with saviors. The morning of that parade, the crowd was chanting, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save us. As if a man on a donkey could free us from this fascist and oppressive Roman regime. Looking back on it in hindsight, it turns out that the donkey was part of his message. Fighting evil with the ways of evil, answering might with might, just cannot be redemptive. But coming into the picture and showing a different way to have power, the way of mercy and compassion, nonviolence and forgiveness, that is the response that God requires and it changes things because in the end, no matter how death dealing things are, no matter how loud the voices of hatred and fear are, resurrected life comes in the light of love as we use our lives to show a different way in the world. And this is the rest of the story. I invite you to think about something that has your heart gripped in fear or even loathing. Ask Jesus to save you from it and to show you a different way. Let us pray. Jesus, Savior on a humble donkey, Empty, of us, uh, of, uh, empty us of our need for revenge, answering hatred with hatred. 
Let your compassion be our compassion. Amen. A story Enter the place you belong Not just looking on For this is your story to the story. I invite you to travel with me in your memory to the court of the Gentiles at the temple. When Jesus turned over the tables in the temple, I was filled with fear and frustration. I was afraid he was about to get himself killed. And, well, he did. It was the risk he took, and in doing so, he showed us that pursuing justice is risky. Still is. You have seen many bold and righteous leaders cut down since my time. I was so angry at the events that unfolded that week, angry at the way things are. Yes, it is part of the redemption story to feel the anger at the way things are and try to do something about it. But I know it is hard to see whether anything we do makes a difference when the pain continues. I, can, I certainly felt that way. That there, there was no hope that last week in Jerusalem, especially as we watched our beloved one die on that Roman executioner cross. But then there was the rest of the story. And what rose up out of that death was something that gave us all the courage to live on and spread the news that death will not win. And as I see you standing there, I know that what truly lives on has more longevity than any political power of any one era. You are part of the rest of my story, of Jesus' story. That is the long arc of justice. In a moment of silence, I invite you to imagine that your actions toward a more just world, small though they may seem, are part of the rest of the story. Ask Jesus to show you what you can do in this world to be part of the picture of justice. Let us pray. Jesus of righteous indignation, give us courage to be part of the ark of justice that you proclaim. Let your passion be our passion. Amen. Enter the passion. Enter the place we In your imaginations now, I invite you to move toward the gate where Jesus taught at the temple. I'm the one who was in charge of keeping an eye out on Jesus whenever he showed up at the temple to teach that week. It was fascinating to see how the crowds adored him. And then, when it looked like he really was going to get in serious trouble, how some people got really frightened and started staying away or even turning on him. But I have to say, if you are someone whose life depends on towing the line, hiding your true feelings or true identity for fear of punishment, it's not an easy thing to stay strong. Fear is a powerful thing. Fear keeps us all small and sometimes silent when we should speak up. Fear is a terrible master. I even saw some of Jesus' closest friends, his disciples, deny they knew him after the crucifixion. Even the best of us succumbs to fear. I can tell you that, even as a Roman official, I felt the fear that night as he was dying. What has become of a society in which a teacher, 
a rabbi, a nonviolent person, is deemed such a threat that the state cannot tolerate them, that they must be extinguished. Are we so fragile that we cannot even engage one another without resorting to death? Well, this seems to be a question for your time and perhaps for all times. Can the rest of the story in that fateful week allow us some hope that we can rise again, rise above, rise up from the ashes of our own dysfunction? In a moment of silence, I invite you to imagine what it could be like to transform the way we deal with our differences. Ask Jesus to teach your heart to love someone who is different from you, someone that you struggle to understand. Let us pray. Rabbi, teacher Jesus, teach us to love beyond differences to look closely at how we might change the rest of the story. Let your understanding be our understanding. Amen. Enter, enter the passion, enter the place we belong, not just looking on, for this is our passion. Enter the passion. Enter the passion. Let us travel now in our memories to the dinner table with Jesus and his friends. Well, here we are gathered around this table just like the times we disciples used to eat with Jesus and whatever unexpected guest he'd invited. I told you the story of the woman who came in that night in the last week with the expensive oil and how we complained to Jesus about it because we were concerned about the money and survival. And then Jesus reminded us that money and survival are not the most important thing in the world, actually how we spend our time and love while we are here is the thing we should be concerned about. And then the rest of the story happened that week. He was right. She was preparing him for burial. We did see his earthly body violated, tortured, and killed. And we did tend his body in the ways it is done, with burial oils, linen cloths, before laying him in the tomb. In fact, it was the linen wraps left behind three days later that gave us the evidence that the tomb could not hold him, that death could not hold him. It makes me wonder what linen burial wraps cover our own eyes right now so that we cannot see the true and present blessings of our lives right now? How much does our worry about the future steal from the present we have before us? In a moment of silence, I invite you to recall the blessings of your life right now. Ask Jesus to help ease your worry of the future so you can live fully right now. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, anointed one, Open our eyes and help us shed the death cloths we are already wearing in order that we might see the light of new life in every single day that we have. 
Let your abundant hope be our abundant hope. Amen. Imagine, we are seated with Jesus at the table. If we had been walking with Jesus through his ministry, we might name to him the moments that were memorable to us. Tonight, name to yourself, or to anyone who might be with you, name the parts of this Lenten season that have been memorable to you the inspiration you've experienced, the freeze frame moments in Holy Week that captured your mind.
Wait, wait, start over. Do it again. Go ahead. My life since that night in the upper room was never the same. As the servant assigned to the room, I witnessed an amazing act of servitude unlike anything I'd ever known. The honored guest took my towel and wrapped it around his waist and took on the duty of washing feet. That was my life, my station, one that was supposed to define my life forever. Everyone in that room was stunned. But Jesus didn't stop there. He went through more of the rituals of Jewish meals, adding in strange words and prophecies that had everyone on edge. Turns out he knew just what he was doing, for his words became eerily true as we all witnessed the breaking of his body and the pouring out of his blood in the days after the meal. He dared speak of a new way of being in relationship where all people are of sacred worth, of equal stature. And this was such a threat to the status quo that he was killed for it. But here you are, and I see now that the rest of the story shows up whenever you gather around tables where all are invited to be present and to feast on the loaf and love and grace that is each person's birthright as a child of God. I see a vision of a time and place where even and especially I have a place at the table. Let me take this out of your way. Becoming, that's becoming calm. Peace be with you. You're welcome here. Would you turn and tell somebody near you? Peace be with you. Yeah, be, be calm, be with you. You're welcome here. And if you don't have anybody in the room with you, say it to the person on the other side of the walls, on the other side of your wall. You have a neighbor, do you not? Yes. Can I have a note? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. May love and grace be with us all. Let us lift our hearts up to God. It is right to give our thanks. It is right. And a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, divine artist, creator of heaven and earth. Your brush strokes evoked the whole of your palette, making all of creation in your colorful images. You breathed into us the breath of life. You framed us with the story of love. And when we turn away and our love fades, like a work of art long neglected, you restore us to original glory. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, Are you? 
you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. You knew we needed a close-up encounter with you, and you zoomed in the lens to meet us face to face. Your spirit, O Lord, anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you, O Lord, would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. Holy God, your work astounds us in its power and promise. By his baptism, our call is established. By his suffering, our pain is companioned. By his resurrection, our own lives are renewed. By this covenant, the Spirit lives in us. In that last week, events public and private began to lead to a moment in which he surrounded himself with his dearest friends. Who among us would not do the same if we knew our time was drawing to a close? Time stood still, life in stark relief. As he took the bread, as he gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my love. It is of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. So at home where you have elements of Holy Communion, pick up your loaf, pick up your cup, and lift them up to God as a sign of thanks and joy, as a sign that you receive them. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his wonder and grace. And so we remember your mighty works, O oh God, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. And we offer ourselves as part of the story of sacrifice and salvation for the sake of the world. Let us together proclaim the mystery of faith, repeating after me, Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come again. I invite you all to open your palms upward Take a moment to freeze frame this moment. This is the rest of the story. It is here that we come to be transformed by God's grace into the beautiful story God intends. Know that all we do, all we must do is open ourselves to receive. The master artist of this moment, of all moments, is at work to restore us even now. You may put your hands down. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the love of Christ so that we may be the whole body of Christ for the world, redeemed by his love. I invite you to connect with somebody near you. Now, if you are at home alone, Think about somebody precious to you or somebody who needs love more than anybody else. Just can put your hand on their shoulder mentally. They are Jesus before you. Holy God, by your spirit, make us one with Christ. 
even with this one other person near us. And one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 You are invited now to take your cup and to take your loaf and to feast, for you are seated at Christ's table. Eat and be filled and be thankful. Will you pray together with me as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.